can I name drop your dad? First name? Yes, you can. Louis? <laughs> And he would walk in with me through the tunnel with all the fans. <laughs> and he'd be with the jersey on, my last name. This guy's signing he'd autographs. Like, <laughs> I got my mom after my brother and I was like, like I think I might be starting soon. <laughs> they were like, they were like, no way. If I get put on the same team as these guys, and I make, a bad, I make a bad pass to them. I'm done. He's looking at you like, <laughs> you make look at me like, make it God, so. <laughs> He's playing Italian music and Jaquil comes on the bus like, who's on the ops? <laughs> I remember we were doing runs for fitness. I, I had to tell the I had to tell the coach like I'm done. I'm gonna puke. I'm, I'm done. Like I'm gonna throw up. Like I'm gonna pass out. The coaching staff thought that maybe I had too much drink, too much to drink <laughs> on the Saturday night. Like maybe he's, he's, he's went out. He had too much to drink. I'm like, I'm like I don't no, drink. Man. I'm like I'm having a serious problem right now. Right. Was he bratty on the pitch though? Yeah. yeah. Look at the line. <laughs> What's up, guys? Jay Zeno here, back again with another episode of the Footy Culture Podcast. We got the usual gang here. We got Dave right there in the corner. What's up? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my boy's calling me right now. I don't know why Josh is calling, but yeah. We got our main man, Chris. <laughs> it's good. We got Diane on the side. I'm here, boys. And over to the couch, we got a uh, resident Milan supporter, Alex. What's up? And we're joined by a very special guest. Great friend of the podcast, Toronto FC footballer, straight out of Woodbridge. We got Luca Petrasso. Welcome, brother. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. Welcome. So I guess a little applause here. We're doing the clap. Okay. Welcome. So yeah, um, we kind of just wanted to yeah just get started by getting into your story. Maybe start with us, like paint a little picture for us. How'd you get into football in the first place? Um, I say I started when I was about four years old. Uh, My mom and dad were the coach at Kleinberg, and then that's when I first started. That was my first club. Um, even my brother, my brother started at Kleinberg as well. Uh, I went from, I think four to around seven, eight years old at Kleinberg and then went to Vaughn and played with this guy over here. This loser over here. <laughs> <laughs> and then his dad coached me for the three years at Vaughn. And then I went to Woodbridge for one year. And then I think that's when TFC Academy started to kind of come about. And, um, I think Johnny Cimini was my first coach at TFC and there was in like a, not like an open tryout, but they brought me in to come and try out. Mm-hmm. And it was the one year older age group. So I ended up going there. And then I made it with TFC Academy when I was 12. And then from 12 on, I've been a part of the club. So it's been a long 10 years. Awesome Damn. journey. Yeah, yeah oh. straight to the first time, team. Yeah. But um, let's touch on those early days, the Vaughn days. You're playing with Alex. <laughs> some, some, some dominant rep teams, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. we did. We what what were those days like? Um, I was, Va- Vaughn was, uh, Vaughn were good days. They were great people. Uh, the coaching staff, the players, I grew up with a lot of players that I played with now. I played with last year with the second team. Um, a lot of them come from Vaughn, even players that are playing at a high level now, like Alistair came from Vaughn, Kamal Miller. Um, no, Dane St. Clair was a part of Vaughn for a bit too. So, uh, I think Vaughn is a great club that brings a lot of youth players up. And I played with this guy too. <laughs> Not, didn't even, get called not, even ju- <laughs> not even just soccer, but like everything outside of soccer. I always used to hang out, go to his house, come to my house. So it's just kind of like a like a good community, a good a good club to go and play for, and mm-hmm. just made a lot of friends there. Yeah, yeah, we we've been speaking about it for a little bit now. Like Vaughn has kind of been built into like this almost powerhouse now of yeah. just like feeding top professional players to the top ranks. How would you say kind of Vaughn developed your game and like? What is what have they done for you that you, translates now to like the professional game? Um, I agree. Vaughn brought up a lot of players, uh, ones that I just said before. Um, even players I've been watching now uh, that get on, like go to scholarships and go to college and build their stuff up to the MLS draft. But Vaughn for me was like it's just a club that I can go to and be myself. A lot of people that I knew, like I said, I had a lot of friends and just grow me into a player that just be confident, be yourself, play the way you are. Um, I had a lot of chemistry with Alex and a lot of other players <laughs> on the field, so it was easy just to go and express myself. And I was I was more of a just a player that just get on the ball and try and dribble, and I was all left foot. So mm-hmm. as long as I can do that, I, I was okay at that age. <laughs> and you were, you were running like left wing at that time, right yeah, wing? Left wing, left wing. What were you running at that time? I don't know, striker right wing. <laughs> this guy was running bench. No, no, okay. Striker right wing. <laughs> both, sub. both of those. <laughs> but most of his, most of your time was actually Woodbridge. And also, obviously, you play with Jordan. You play yeah, with him now. Mm-hmm. I mean, you had some time, not in Woodbridge, but you play with Io, I'm pretty sure, right? Mm-hmm. Who else did you play with? Noble? No, Noble was at Mordell. You play with a lot of guys who you still play with now on the first team. Yeah. So what's it like playing with them now still to this day? Um, I'd say it's pretty cool. Like, 
a lot of the young guys that are on the first team now, like this year we've had like 10 or 10 or 12 just guys that are straight from the academy. Right when we started the season, all, like, a lot of us are playing. And I grew up playing with like, like I played with Jade and Nelson and for like two or three years with, in the academy. And, and he's two years younger than me, but I played with him in the second team. Ayo a lot in the second team. Peruza. Peruza is one of my best friends. Um, I played with a lot of those guys in the group. I played with Peruza as well in the, uh, at Woodbridge. And then players that were that left now, TFC Rocco. I played with Rocco Romeo. He plays in the CPL now. So a lot of, I would say a lot of the players that go to TFC, a lot of them come from Brampton, come from Vaughan, come from Woodbridge. It's just been like that major core group that have been coming mm -hmm. up and playing. And this year I would say is probably the most that we've seen in all these players play especially from the start of the season to now. Yeah. Big yeah. Time. Like I've been saying like this 2000 generation, yeah. like in Canada, the golden generation ballers. <laughs> like what, what is it? Like, <laughs> yeah. like you look at the, you look at the 99s. Yeah. There's ballers, but like compared to like 2000, there's just like so many, like what is it about your generation? Like, I don't know. I, I, there's a lot of them. There's, there's me, there's IO, there's jo uh, no, Jordan's in 01. Yeah. There was Rocco's 2000. Yates is a 2000. Um, a lot of us came up. I don't know, I think the yeah. big part, I think, for us was that we all kind of played with each other growing up in the academy, which made it a lot easier to transition to the first team. Um, but, like, yeah, all of us have come from Woodbridge, Vaughn, grown into players that we are now, so. I think one thing, too, is you got, like, even when, when we, our age is, our age group, like, we didn't have the, the, the what's it called? Like, Vaughn wasn't big back then. The facilities. The facilities, yeah. you know, the, the development wasn't big back then. It was... You see it now more days, especially now, like Vaughn is trying to push and mm -hmm. growing at such an exponential level. You see it growing in, in all these kids. You know, like you say Vaughn this year is like undefeated, yeah. right? So like yeah. you can see the levels really growing. Canada in general, uh, soccer here is growing like massively yeah. and so fast. So like you can see why all these ballers are growing in here and developing so fast. So mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah really but I think, I think even our age, we weren't even in like that really generation where everyone like it wasn't as like easy to get a chance because we didn't have cpl growing up no. our age i was like just yeah, after yeah, like i think it's like more 2002s now that like you have the chance to go there yeah but i think between yeah like you said brampton moradale vaughn woodbridge between those teams i think when tfc started scouting like the academy they took probably like five six players from each of those teams yeah so there was a lot of players that still went that are on still the second team that went away i know Martin, team, yeah, like Stefan, Julian, yeah. you, like in Norway so now. many people, even Woodbridge, more than all of them, like took everyone. Yeah. So it was a lot of people. It took a age. couple of coaches too from Woodbridge, Johnny Cimini, Marco, yeah. Casanova. Um, and I agree, like when you're saying about the Vaughn facilities and everything, mm -hmm. like I've only been to North Maple like a couple of times and that's like a, like a top turf field. Yeah. yeah it's like, nice. And they only built that a couple of years ago. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's nice. It's you, can great, see, you see, you can see the place. development and it's definitely going to the right direction, obviously, you know. Yeah, Canada now sure. in the, the World Cup, so yeah, it's huge. Hopefully, First you know time. we can we can stay in that in the World Cup from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's good. It's it's really yeah. good. superheroes. We see them in all walks of life: daring, strong, inspiring. And in football, these are the ballers that made us fall in love with the game. And speaking of superheroes, Footy Fresh is back with an all-new collection. Heroes, the icons that have created the memories that'll live in our hearts forever. We've got King of the Premier League, Wayne Rooney, PFA Player of the Year. We've got Thierry Henry, Mr. Invincible, once taken over the Premier League, Arsenal's very own, forever. We've got Karim Benzema, winner of all the trophies. Name a better hero this year. We've got Super Sunny, Hung Min's son. Who else could score but him? We've got mystical Mo Salah, the most majestic, Liverpool's very own, the king. And last but not least, the mastermind, the mega mind, has all the tricks up his sleeve, Xavi Hernandez. And you can have all these fresheners, all these heroes, live at thefootyculture.com. Shop now the coolest and most heroic air fresheners around. Yeah, so, Amazing. do you want to ask a question? I have yeah, a, I, go ahead, go okay, ahead. so I want to ask you obviously, this is a big one too, because I obviously I grew up with you, so I know this. Can I name drop your dad? First name? Yes, you can. Louis? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us Shout about Louis, Louis and uh, 
you know, everything about your growth. I know he was a big part of it, especially we'll talk more about your brother later and how he came along into it. But you could tell us right now about your dad and how he played a role in what you did today. Um, yeah, my dad, my dad was a major part in my, in my career so far, even since I was growing up. Like I said, him and my mom coached me at Kleinberg. And I think the good thing about my dad was that he never really put too much pressure on me. Like he was just a guy that would come and watch. You remember playing Vaughn, come and watch, enjoy. Um, he would help out Tony in, in training, Alex's yeah. dad in training. Just want to be there and help out, just help out kids in general. Yeah. And for me, like, he was just a guy that would just come and watch and enjoy it. Like, never put too much pressure on me. Never forced me to play a certain way. Just came and just let me play the way I play and just grow into the person I am now. Um, right. So having him throughout my whole career and as a person, just being there to support me no matter what, through bad days, through good days. Now, obviously, with the first team. Um, last year, he didn't come and watch me a lot. I was with the second team, and we would play games on Fridays at, like, 3, 4 o'clock, and he'd be working. That's working until six, seven o'clock. So now when we play on the weekends and he comes to BMO Field, he loves it. Like, <laughs> like he goes crazy at BMO Field. Like, <laughs> not even for me. Even when he was watching my brother back in England, it was insane. He would fly out just himself to go and watch him play in yeah, England. Yeah, that's amazing. Just to watch yeah. for a week, come back home. Yeah, your um, mom, same thing. Yeah, always mom, supportive. I remember was, that. My mom does so much for me as well. Like, like I played both sports when we were younger too. I played hockey as well. Oh yeah. Until I was twelve, and then I decided to go to soccer. Um, to, to continue just one sport in soccer. So my mom did everything as well, driving me and my brother back and forth, hockey, soccer. Jeez. Soccer at like 8 o'clock at night. Hockey was at 5, just going back and forth Damn. just to do two, two sports. And for didn't me. complain. She was the nicest nicest yeah. person ever. <laughs> nicest. Didn't complain, just wanted to do it and knew that we loved it. So as long as it made us happy and kept us out of trouble, it was, mm -hmm. it was a mm -hmm. good thing to do. So now my dad comes and watches me at BMO, it's like, it's like the best best day of the week for him. He comes on Saturday. <laughs> like when I was playing every game in the beginning of the season, like he would come early with me to the games at like two hours, two and a half hours before the game. I have to go early, and he would walk in with me through the tunnel with all the fans, <laughs> and he'd be with the jersey on my last name. This guy signing <laughs> autographs. <laughs> It'd be like he's like he's like anybody want to sign my autograph? Yeah. <laughs> so he's I'm his dad. Yeah, he enjoys it. So oh, it's amazing no. to see that. So yeah. you definitely need that, like especially like. For kids who have fathers who don't really see soccer or, you know, sports as a job mm -hmm. and they kind of push that aside, like, oh, no, you know, this is not this is not a future for you. Mm -hmm. This you got to look into this. You got to do this instead. It's good to have a father that knows that you want to do something, mm -hmm. a family or parents mm -hmm. that, you know, you want to do something and push you to do it. Right. Yeah. So, like, that's definitely you can see some people definitely don't make it as a pro because of that. You know, the family, they don't have that family. They don't have the people behind them yeah. to push them. So it's good to see that you had that. And yeah, it, for sure. Did it push you, right? Yeah, it really it pushed you, right? So for that's sure. what you need. I agree. Like there's, obviously there's parents that are very tough and like mm -hmm. kind of look at it like, oh, say he's going 17, 18, 19 and he's not making it. They yeah. cut, exactly. take them out of soccer, yeah. go to school exactly. and, and get whatever, get a, a real job or whatever it is or get a four year education. And my dad was just like, if you love what you do and you want to do it. You do it until you don't want to do it anymore. And mm -hmm. I, I just kept playing and kept playing. And you got that obviously shot. you go through tough times in soccer. It's this ups and downs exactly. yeah. Yeah, every yeah. week, every day. There's something different. But as long as you keep going at it, like sooner or later, there's going to be good things that come out of it. So, yeah. And you had a really hard decision to make because you were playing AAA hockey, right? Yeah, it was. With the Marley. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was like my team were playing the NHL. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you had like, I think what age were you? You were like probably like 13, 14. Yeah. And you have to make, I remember that you guys would talk about it all the time, what you were going to choose, either hockey or soccer. Yeah. I mean, you always like soccer I, more. I, I love so soccer. Yeah. But I mean, it was a hard choice. I mean, that's always a hard choice for young players. I mean, yeah. choosing yeah. between and the how two. How did you come to that decision? Truthfully, I came to it because I looked at it and I was like, I was good at hockey, but I wasn't like that good. Like there was players on my team that were like goals, assists every game. And that was the most important part of hockey is stats. Yeah. And I wasn't a stat guy. I would come on, skate. Do your thing. And fast then, as I yeah. can, do what I can, work hard. <laughs> And then come off 30 seconds. So, like, <laughs> yeah. I play on a good team. And there's guys on my team now that got drafted into the NHL two years ago. So, like, I knew. I looked at it like, I'm not that big. I'm not that strong. And there was guys that are bigger than me at that age. So, I just decided to go to soccer. And I felt that it would be better for me. And it was I, en I enjoyed soccer. It was... The, the thing about hockey was it was expensive at that age. Yeah. It was like oh, yeah. it was like five, six grand at 11, 12 years old. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my parents were paying equipment, sticks, skates. Everything. Oh, my god. And then gosh, soccer man. was just like go outside, enjoy it, play in the sun with your friends, cool tournaments. 
And that so kind of it was an easy decision then. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't cry about it yeah. after. <laughs> you, didn't think, you didn't think twice. No, I didn't think twice. Oh, that's good. Well, it was, right, brother, it was my, a right decision. My brother just uh, decided soccer too. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So your brother was playing hockey too. Yeah, he was playing hockey. You guys played on the same team, or was no, it like no? A he played double A for like uh, Vaughn Kings. True, true. And I played triple A for the Marlies or the, the Marlboros they were called. Did your yeah. Did your brother making that soccer decision help you make that soccer decision? Yeah, for yeah. sure, it was definitely a big part. Which goes on to my next question. Now tell us about Michael and his influence on here. <laughs> Michael's probably one of the biggest ones because luckily he's five years older than me. So I, I watch it and I watched him for his whole career and yeah. his career going on now. So I had a little bit of the, I would say even my mom says I had the first, the first glance of what it's like for him to play at the highest level mm-hmm. and to correct the things that maybe he didn't do right or, yeah, yeah. and to do the things that he did right. So I watched it like I watched him and forever when he was in England and he played for the he played at the under 17 world cup yeah when he was 15 when they played against England and it was in Mexico I went to that tournament when I was like a kid I was like 10 11 years old Jeez. but him now on me has been huge like now that he's played in the MLS as well for Montreal so he knew exactly what the league was for like right away and what then to expect yeah what to expect and then I once I signed with the first team at the beginning of this year it was like just Right away, he told me, like, it's not going to be easy to play for a big club like this. The TFC is a club that signs big players and mm-hmm. wants to win trophies. So it was just put your head down, work hard, and if you get a chance, obviously you take it. And then when that chance came, it was like the second game of the season. Or, yeah, second game of the season. Yeah. It was the home yeah, game. Yeah, it was early, yeah. yeah it was yeah, the home was game at the, f- the home opener at BMO Field. And it was during the week of training. I found out, like, I can tell if I'm in the starting lineup or not. And the week before, I like I dressed, but I didn't play against Dallas. Okay, okay, yeah. So then I was just going into training, like, all right, I'll train hard week. Hopefully, I can get into the squad, and just like have my parents, and my family experience my first game at BMO, being being on the bench. And then, like, as I got closer to the Saturday, like Wednesday, Thursday, I was in the starting lineup playing left wing, <laughs> and I called, <laughs> I called my mom after my brother, and I was like, I was like, I think I might be starting. So <laughs> they were like, they were like, no way, <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> and then Friday came, the day before the game, we put the paper on the board and i saw that my name was on it and like, i couldn't <laughs> believe it like i was it's like uh it's like in high school you know when you make your your high school team yeah, yeah. yeah. No, i know oh, and, you, and like you balled that. out I know. every game you played so far you balled yeah. out that, i couldn't believe it like and then that night i was quiet at the dinner table all of us <laughs> and then it was like a two o'clock kickoff in the afternoon and it was cold that day too in the morning didn't say a word to my parents <laughs> how nervous were you i was nervous I was you got most, the butterflies most nervous i've ever been in a game yeah. Have you but once I stepped onto the field, like it all goes. It away. was like it all goes away. Like I wow. took in like everything, atmosphere, all the fans, and then I got the ball in like the second minute. It was my first touch <laughs> of the game. My brother says it to me every day. Like after the game, he was like, "Once you took that first touch, I was hoping you just play a simple back pass. Like, <laughs> don't take it too serious." So I got the ball and I dribbled the whole field. Yeah, by, I like, remember by that. Yeah, guys. I do. So I I do the, too. I went the corner and then I was like, <laughs> "Done." I was calm down, and then I got assist that game and played the full ninety. So. Yeah. It was, with yeah. But how was it playing in front of that many fans? Uh, like a difference home or fans too? Home same, fans where you grew thing. up, home club too. No, it's it's definitely like, definitely surreal when I take it in. Like, like even like during the game, like I even say this sometimes to my friends. Like they ask me the same question. Like, I don't take in how many people are there. Mm-hmm. Like I'm so like focused on. You don't see any. I don't see anything. I only see my guys. Exactly. I only see players on my team yeah. and the it's other. Like a regular team. game. Yeah. yeah, unless it's like. I'm going to a corner and I'm walking. I'm taking a break yeah, and then well, I take it all in. Exactly, exactly. And I look at it. It's like it's wow. Or like, it's a dead ball. Yeah. You, know? you don't have nothing. You take it all in. Yeah, that's interesting. Like how? Like when you're playing on the field, how does it? What's the difference between like playing in front of home fans and away fans? Like how does it feel as a player? <laughs> the away fans is definitely tough. Like this year, I've been to some like tough environments where like they're on you all game, like all game, like. They get a they get like a half chance and their fans go nuts. The same <laughs> way as our fans. Yeah, like yeah, our yeah. fans go nuts when we're driving with the ball forward and we have a three v two, four v three. The fans stand up. Like our home fans are like this year especially, like you could tell, especially with all the players that we have now. Yeah. yeah. It's sold out and it's crazy. Like mm-hmm. they go all game. Like when we when I'm coming into the stadium in the tunnel and they're waiting for fan like the players to come into the change room, there's like hundreds of them just waiting. There's kids, like families waiting to get signed jerseys, like Yeah. After the stadium, they're all waiting there two hours before, like two hours after, to just wait for us to come out. So you can tell it's it's a it's a pretty cool environment now with all these guys that are in the at TFC, and hopefully we're pushing to go to the playoffs this year. But like 
twenty nine, thirty thousand people every game. It's yeah. And what's the what's the what stadiums have been like the most loudest fans? Most loudest feel like that I played at right now, I would say um um recently was Nashville. I didn't get to play that game, but I was there and it was a uh, You can feel it. You can feel it. It's a good stadium. It's brand new. Oh, Columbus yeah. I yeah, played with. Right. Columbus. It was like third game of the season. That was cool. Brand new stadium. It was amazing. Um, Cincinnati we played at. It was nice. Cincinnati a lot. Too. That's a brand new stadium as yeah, well. Yeah, they're all brand new. <laughs> they're all brand new. Yeah. These ones are like, they're like state of the art, like crazy. And they're like, soccer specific oh, too, soccer, right? Like, yeah. Like closed in, like. Wow. It's amazing. Perfect stadiums. It's cool. Yeah. Do you think, um, do you think it's more pressure playing in front of home fans or the away fans? Home fans. 100%. I'm I think so that's much what less I maybe nervous thought, than yeah. away game. Ner- like away games is kind of like. Like it's gonna be a tough environment, yeah. and it's you know what you're getting into yeah. type of thing. So I'm I'm not like as nervous playing an yeah. away game rather than a home game. It's like you don't want to mess up. Don't, <laughs> yeah. Exactly, don't want to mess up. You don't want to lose at home. The fans will get yeah. on you if you don't. Exactly. Yeah, you don't want to get booed by your own fans. Yeah, like even the even my debut, we were down four one and a half, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I didn't do uh, anything. I, think I I had a great first half, yeah. and then I hear the booze at halftime while walking in. I'm like, oh my god, this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't believe it. Holy yeah, song. Yeah. Just unlucky. Yeah. No, I want. I want to touch back a little bit um, when you're growing up. Um, so you're like in elementary school, probably around 11, 12 years old. You see your brothers in Europe playing for like QPR. Mm-hmm. He's going to this U17 World Cup. Did you feel like pressure to kind of because you're growing up as a footballer as well? Did you feel a pressure to kind of match that to? To live up to that, to maybe surpass that, like what was that experience like? Um, no, I, w- I, I, w- I would say at that young age, I didn't feel pressure. I was kind of, I was more of like a fan. Like, I was just like, wow, he's playing in England. He's playing. There was one time he was on the bench in the Premier League, and he never, he never came on in his last game of the season. It was yeah. QPR versus Leicester before they got relegated. And he was on the bench, and I was like, like I was like a fan. Like I couldn't believe it. Like showing all my friends <laughs> in high school, and like he's playing here, he's playing there. And then as I got older and I knew I was like coming to an age where, okay, I'm at TFC Academy, then I'm signed for the second team and I was 17. And I kind of like, like, I want to take this serious. I want to do it just like he did and, and hopefully play, have an amazing career like he did at that age. Like him at 17, 18, he was playing professional for QPR and he was on loan in League One clubs, League Two clubs. So he's seen it all, like, especially at the highest level in England, like, like those environments are probably crazy to play in. So... Uh, but no, I didn't. I didn't feel like I I had to live up to that or, or meet his like ex- his expectations or play the way he wants to play or play the way he plays. I just kind of just guided myself and just played the way I wanted to play and and take the steps that I had to. Everybody has a different career, a different pathway. And the good thing about that was my mom and dad never really put pressure on me to oh you got to go do what he did. You got to go to Europe and play. My mom actually wanted me to stay home like. Her thing was, I already lost one son that went to England. <laughs> you're, you're not going nowhere. <laughs> and he left at 15. And him, like, like what I seen from him was bad. Like, homesick for six months. Like, wow. like, like bad. Like, if you, you leave at 15 years old, you don't know what yeah. you're going to expect living by yourself. And luckily, he had his best friend, Dylan Carrero, that was with him. He's my agent now. Yeah. Um, so he was playing at the, at the moment with him. And luckily, they had them two together. They were both from Toronto, and they both went to QPR. So it was easier for him. But my mom, once my mom found out and saw that, like he struggled badly there, like just the mental side. And yeah, you don't want to see your kid. Like, didn't wanna, she didn't want to. She didn't want to. Yeah, she didn't want to lose me to go there at 15, 16 years old and try it out. And I don't think I'd be strong enough to do it either. So, um, but no, I'm happy to to be here as well. So it's amazing. Yeah, and you t- obviously took that TFC route. Tell us like the process of like getting scouted by TFC, what academy life is like, because that's an experience not a lot of mm-hmm. people get to go through. Like, it's definitely a big privilege. So, like, what's that, like, journey like from, like, getting scouted to, like, even, like, day-to-day at TFC mm-hmm. Academy? Um, like I said, I got scouted when I was 12. I want to say I was scouted, but, like, I had Johnny, who was part of the Woodbridge uh, program as well, and he went to TFC, so it was easier for him to bring me in and just try out with all the guys that were there. And then once you go into the academy, the academy is amazing. Like when I was, I think it's a little bit different now, but when I was there, we were going to European tournaments like for two weeks. So we went to France one time when we were like 15 years old. Wow, we played amazing. against PSG's youth team. Yeah. Um, I remember we played against Juventus, came here and played at the yeah. OSA. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Juventus came here and we were, um, I was like 15, 16. And Thing played, Thing played on Juventus at the time, Nicolo Fagioli. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he was there. He was the number 10. And we played wow. against him. He was amazing. Um, so we played against Juventus. And then you play in the Dallas Cups, uh, yeah. which are cool. I played against Manchester United when we were in Dallas Cup, Arsenal. Um, wow, played against sick. those teams. Man, you like, Thing was there. Like, Tatum Chung was on the team. James Gardner was on the team. Um, wow. Arsenal, uh, Balugan, the striker, was Balugan? on the team. Oh, wow. Jeez. And those guys were like amazing. Yeah, for we sure. played, you can, yeah, you can yeah. tell a different type of quality, right? Yeah, it was it was insane. Like Jeez. when we were playing, when we played Man U and Dallas Cup, like they got a red card the first ten minutes, and they still and we were like, on. oh, this, this is our game. We're gonna we're gonna win, and they still managed to score. <laughs> like <laughs> second half, we were up a man the whole game. They still were bullying us in the field. <laughs> it felt like you guys were a man down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we played Arsenal. Arsenal was in like uh, the Rose Bowl Stadium in Dallas, and we were already out of the tournament. They were in, so we were just playing. Just the, the third game, yeah. just for fun, basically. And, like, it was 6-5. We lost 6-5, and oh, I, sc- wow. I scored two goals and got an assist that game. And then after the game, I was like, oh, man, I could be going to Arsenal after this. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> you get any calls? I was like, no, no. <laughs> I was like, that was the best game I've ever played in the academy. Like, it was amazing. Those guys were, like, unbelievable. It was crazy. But then you played, like, Dallas Cup, I said, European tournaments. You went to Italy for a tournament. And then uh, back then, we just played in... Uh, uh, League One, so it was. But TFC Academy, we used to train at like six thirty at night, and like mm-hmm. go to school go and to school, yeah. straight from high school. Luckily, I went to Bill Crothers, and they would um, carpool anybody that was on TFC Academy at that time. What? That's they would sick. have a taxi that would come pick us up, bring wow. us to training, yeah. and then my my dad or my mom would come pick me up after training. So it worked out in that way. It's cool. The TFC Academy is cool. It's amazing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> no, that's cool. <laughs> but um, um, like you said, like you're going to TSC Academy right after school. Um, like as you progress through the age group, like does the training kind of get more like rigorous, more serious? Like, what's the difference between like training sessions when you're like 14 in the academy to like 18 in the academy? Um, yeah, they definitely change the the intensity changes the like. Like, you have to take more accountability of yourself to actually show up and take care and of your body when you're 17, 18, 19 and perform. Like, like when I was 14, 15, coming out of high school, you were just, like, straight to training, sit in the changing room until 4.30, 5 o'clock started, just go into the field, train, yeah. have fun with your friends, yeah. play. Like, I didn't really think too much about, oh, am I going to am I gonna make it to yeah, the second exactly. team? Am I going to make it to the yeah. first team? I just, I just enjoyed it, just had fun. And then as I got to the age where I was like 17, and that's when I first signed with the second team, um, that's when it's like you train in the morning. So I was training at like 10 a.m., um, just like how I do now, like a regular day with the first team. But And then it starts to get serious because then you're playing. And the second team, when I was there my first year, we were playing USL Championship. So you start to get the experience of what it's like to play. Maybe in like 1,000, 2,000 fans were there, do the away trips. Um, we had some experienced players. We had some first-team players that would come down and play with us. So, like, it was cool in that sense. And then it was like I was just a young kid, so I would work hard every day and hopefully that I would get into the lineup with the second team when I first started with them. But definitely it gets serious when you start to become 17, 18 years old and the training, the tempo. Uh, players start to get mad at you in training. And they start to give it <laughs> to you in training. I remember one time I went with the first team, went, like the second team, I went to the first team training my first time. And I was so nervous, like, yeah, like I was on the other field, they just tell you come. I guess one player pulls out. Oh wow, that's how they do it. Come eh? and train. Sometimes they used to do it like last year or two years ago when I was with the second team. They would tell me in the morning of like, I guess one player drops oh. out of training. Maybe. You were, you were expecting to go yeah, train you, with you the second team, the but second then, like, team, okay, and then yeah. they just tell you come. We need a player for training. That's amazing. And then um, like and then it's like serious there. Like so like you would have the starting lineup. Like the starting lineup, we play like eleven v eleven. So you have the starters, and then I would be on the sub team. And, like, you kind of just, like, try and play and just express yourself. And then, like, obviously, if you give the ball away, they get get at you right away. Like, gets There's no like, room for yeah, no, 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 no very, room for There's some people little. that get at you right away. They, they, they give it to you if you're, if you're doing the wrong things. If you're not working hard, they give it to you. Tackling and training. Like, it was full on. And I was just experiencing it my first time. I was like, let me go back to the second team. Right <laughs> no, <I'm back. laughs> I don't know if I'm ready for this. <laughs> but, oh no, it's, it's, it's cool. It's a the gradual increase as you get older. Mm-hmm. And now you fast forward to the first team. 
uh, you're in the squad and you see Lorenzo Insigne <laughs> gets announced. I know. Bernardeschi. You're you're an Italian from Woodbridge, growing up watching Euro Cups, watching World Cups. How's it feel to have like like Euro Cup winners, to be like training with them every day, to have them like on the same team yeah. as you? It's insane, to be honest. I would have never expected that to happen or players I mean, you just back. you just finished watching them win the euros yeah i just watched yours i watched yeah. the zuri thing on netflix you know I mean? like you just finished watching them play yeah you went to celebrate uh, and now they're sure. playing with your theory. and i hear in jan- like january <laughs> comes around he's he's signing he's coming in it's coming in june and then everybody gets excited and then as we start to continue the season yeah. we're like oh we still got three four months until he comes like we'll just we'll wait it out right. see what happens when he comes and then he comes and then you see him and the first time i saw him was after a game we won um not sure what game it was but he came into the change room and like said hi to everyone, shaked everybody's hand and just looked at him like, can't wow. these guys in the same change room as me. <laughs> <laughs> and it, like he's played at the highest level, played with the best players in yeah. Italy, Napoli, the he legend in Napoli. Everyone. And then yeah. Bernadeschi, like I heard the rumors about Bernadeschi, um, that he was spotted in Toronto. I seen that. And then, at Vaughn Mills. Yeah. And then I was like, <laughs> That's so weird. and I was just like thinking like this, no way this guy's yeah. coming here too like this guy plays for you Vey. like yeah. <laughs> and that was fast too for him yeah it was fast a couple yeah, of weeks he was here and then once it came out serious on twitter i saw the rumors and he was there and right away he was at tfc it was so after you, you find out the same time like in twitter and stuff yeah like, you don't no, know we don't know anything <laughs> we don't know anything That's until crazy. like the day the day before like if it's like officially done yeah, and yeah. signed the coach would tell us yeah. blah 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 it's coming into the team just to let you guys know but the news won't be leaked until a couple hours, whatever. Um, so now that they're in the like they're a part of the team now, it's amazing. Like I look like you just can, like watching them. You can every feel day. like the professionalism, yeah. the different type yeah. of did the level just automatically different change? Level. Like, every, like in training, just like that. Right. People trying to impress, people trying to show course, I can right? play with you. Yeah, I can be a part of the team. I can show my qualities. So how did right you away. feel like the first time training and you see them playing? Yeah. I was I was nervous in training too. Of course, because right. I'm like, if I get put on the same team as these guys and, <laughs> and I make a bad, <laughs> I make a bad pass to them, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> team, you look at you like, you look at me like, like, you know what I mean? Like, dude, I, I would feel nervous. <laughs> no, I was definitely, but now, like, now that we played a couple of games with them and they're part of the team, like, they're great people. Great people to be yeah. around with in training. They're high level, high intensity. You can see their quality in training. Like in senior, in the Euros, we did that cut in shot against. Yeah. Uh, who was it against? Uh, Belgium. Belgium. Yeah. Belgium. He did an unbelievable shot. He does that a lot in training. Does it in eh? training. Cut in. Move. Boom. After training, like on Fridays um, before games, he would go after training and do free kicks. Just like 20, 30 free kicks. Damn. Puts a wall there, the mannequins, yeah, yeah. and just hits. And he tells the goalie, just stay there and try and save my shots. And he would hit 9 out of 10. Like it was <laughs> unbelievable. I would just watch. Perfect. <laughs> His free kicks are like nothing. Jeez. So like... Him, obviously, he plays left wing. Bernadeschi plays right wing. Mm-hmm. I played a little bit of left wing this year. So, mm-hmm. But now that I have Mimo in my position to look up to and, and learn, like, he's top class. Like, yeah. He's come in and, like, true, like, professional. Yeah. Like, on the ball, I take notes from him. Like, it's unbelievable. So calm. Passing is amazing. Mm-hmm. Positioning at left back is amazing. And he's, like, 35, 36 years old, and yeah. he's moving like he can – Still go, yeah. Full nineties. Scored that banger last. Scored game. a banger. Like, <laughs> that was a beautiful goal. This guy's he's amazing. So yeah. has he kind of been like a mentor to you now? Yeah, he is. is. He, yeah, you learn a lot. He I comes learn up a lot. I watch. I watch him in games. I watch him in training. Sometimes when we do training, um, we're doing like just practicing corners or mm-hmm. crosses. They put me and him on the same side and just to practice with each other one yeah. after another. I learn from him. He speaks pretty good English too, so yeah. it's easy just to communicate with those guys and learn. So him is. Probably with the biggest role model that I look up to in my position at TFC. Of course, it's not yeah, a bad that, thing that's that's yeah. massive for you, yeah. especially because you're still so young. Yeah, and I mean, you just got with the first team this yeah. season, and you're gonna get your chances, of course. Yeah, but like, what's the if anyone's gonna be ahead of you? It's yeah. good that it's someone that you know, a exactly. foreign player who's done quality. it all. You yeah. know, so like you're. And I mean, it, and it'll keep you competitive. It'll keep you learning. Yeah, I mean, to keep up with these guys, obviously you're fighting for a spot with them. Mm-hmm. So that's gonna be making you play like your best soccer. And plus, like I said, you're still so young. So I mean. That's a huge advantage. I mean, obviously, you know that. Yeah, for I sure. I mean, a lot of people are looking at it, and they're saying, like, oh, my God, like, you know, it's hard. It's going to be hard to get time, obviously, with them. Yeah, yeah. But, no, I mean, you, ha- like, you have to look at it like that. I mean, you're going to be playing, like, your best soccer that you probably ever played. Mm-hmm. Your chance is going to come because you know they're not going to stay here forever. Yeah. So, learn from them, yeah. grow with them, and you get your chance, and that's it, right? Yeah. Like, even same thing. My parents even tell me, like, 
beginning of the year, I would never expect it to come on and play as many games as I played this year. Yeah, like I played lot, 25 yeah. games in six months. And I started yeah, every yeah. game until, obviously, the players come in. Yeah. Which is just like, I have to understand that. The players that are coming in in my positions are world-class players. So yeah. it's better to learn from them and watch and take notes. Yeah. And then <laughs> if I get on the field, if I get to start a couple games, come on, try my best and help the team. So... And it's those amazing. games that you played, you played really good. Yeah, yeah. every time you come off the bench, yeah. we see it. Like, like really, really impressive. Yeah. I mean, it was a really, really impressive first season. I think everyone could agree with that. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> no. The season's not done yet. <laughs> Terrible first <season. laughs> No, I mean, so got I'll, I'll be now. honest. I mean, I've known him forever. I'll be honest with him. But no, it's been, it's been really, really impressive, the games that you have played. Thank it's you. It's been really good. Thank you. Who? I've, been, I've been keeping up this season a lot, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean obviously, I, you're playing. I know a lot of guys from the team. And mm-hmm. obviously, with the new additions, like... I think everyone in Toronto is watching yeah. now. Like, oh, 100%. It's, it's, there's more fans now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's good, though. Who would you say is, like, an underrated, like, baller in, like, training? Like, who's, like, doing a lot, like, trying to nutmeg a lot of guys? Like, who's the tricky one, with it? The one that tries a lot of things, you probably see it on the field. He, he's got so much confidence. Jaden Nelson. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Tries everything. <laughs> of course. Mags. In training, he'd be trying mags. <laughs> <laughs> and we're looking at it like, oh, don't make the wrong person because he's going to come and crack you. <laughs> but he's got so much freedom. Like, like the way he moves and, like, the way he just, like, goes about his training and, like, just so much confidence. Like, no matter what, you're not going to tell me that I can't do this, I can't yeah. do that. I'm going to be myself. And That's what you want. It's That's amazing. a good attitude to have. Yeah, And amazing. he's been playing, like, different positions yeah, here been, and there. Recently, he's been playing center mid. He's That's why. He's been playing he's been center hurt. mid. Yeah. Right? He's been playing center mid as an eight. Um plays obviously as a left winger right winger yeah. but like confidence and that like that kid is crazy just gets the ball and dribbles and he's so fast like yeah. oh my god yeah. you see that hair moving like yeah. he's <laughs> going crazy is he the yeah. fastest guy on the team yeah to be honest right now yeah definitely one of the fastest guys if not he's the first because when jacob was here jacob was fast Shout really yeah. jacob's up there now he's on loan but he's uh Jaden's oh. definitely quickest with the ball like Agility, yeah. Yeah, one chef, done. That, yeah. He's done. He's right? good. That's mm-hmm. amazing. Who would you say is like who's the funniest guy on the team? <laughs> funniest yeah, guy on the yourself. team? <laughs> Not me. I'm quiet in that changing. <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like it's like a McNaughton. I feel like he's like, feel like he's low key funny. I don't or know like why. Kosey, I don't know why. Kosey Thompson. Kosey's got some. Yeah. Kosey's up. Like he's he speaks. He gets in there. He's got some good jokes. Um, Jaquil's a Jaquil loves to <laughs> joke around yeah, and clown yeah. about. Um, Jaquil is definitely up there for sure. The Italians too. The Italians joke around all all day, all like training <laughs> and everything. Joke around <laughs> Italian, <laughs> screaming in Italian. Oh my god! They're just gosh. being themselves. They just like, go out of each other. In training, they're laughing, they're joking, which is good to have. Yeah. Not, doesn't have to be so serious all yeah, the time. No, of course. Yeah. Are they, are they the ones like running the tracks in the locker room? Like who's got like the speaker? Running the tracks is Jaden Nelson. Really? Yeah. Nobody else takes over. Just no. Not even in senior. senior has been playing recently his Italian music. Italian. Like last game on the bus to Miami, he was playing his And you guys Italian. like, oh my God. He was playing, <laughs> <laughs> he was playing his Italian music and Jaquil comes on the bus like, who's on the Ox? <laughs> Yo, give me the like, Ox Get this guy out of here. <laughs> but Jaden has Ox authority like He's that? Ox authority <laughs> in the change room. Wow. Game, what is he playing game though? Game day, training. Plays all rap, Drake. <laughs> Uh, I don't. I don't know a lot of the people that he yeah. plays. So <laughs> I can't really say anything. But Insignia and Bernardeschi vibe with it, no? Yeah, no? yeah. they do. Yeah, yeah they like oh, Drake. Love um, Insignia loves Drake. Jeez, bro. they all love that that type of music. They dance to it. And change <laughs> That's it. amazing. You've seen you've, you've seen if you guys follow him on Instagram, he takes videos of all the yeah, players yeah, dancing. Yeah, always. Jaquiel, Achara. <laughs> no, that's good. So like the camaraderie is good in the locker room. Like oh, everyone's yeah. together and stuff. It's amazing. That's it's awesome. Be- it's probably the best it's ever been. That's good. So yeah. what are you playing if you yeah. got the ox in the change room? If I got the ox, I'm probably playing the same Drake. Oh, shit. I'm playing it safe. Drake essentials. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I feel like you get comment. judged. If you have the ox, you probably get judged hard. Oh, of yeah, for sure. Hundred <laughs> percent. Actually, bro, it's a tough role, bro. Nah, that's, that, not that's a big authority. It is. It is. Jaden's a young man taking on that yeah. authority too. That's, uh, that's crazy. I thought it'd been someone like you know, I'll d- definitely like older. maybe like I'm a Vinga or yeah. Zorio, maybe. Yeah. yeah. No, no, nothing. Else. Jeez. Yeah. I got the ox. That's amazing. <laughs> Wow. I feel like Michael Bradley would have some whack uh, songs some played. Songs? I don't Just know. Some I Frank Sinatra. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Listen to me any Bradley, music. Uh, Bradley's been at the club a while. Mm-hmm. Club captain. What's he like? Kind of like as a leader. He's a a true a true leader, a true captain. Yeah. Like I had um, when I was on the second team last year, um, and I would be training with the first team on and off. Like he was someone that like took me under his wing and just said, "Just come, train, work hard, be patient." And obviously your time will come and and like having him now as part of the first team, like 
took me under his wing right away once the season started, believed in me. Um, obviously, Bob believed in me right from the beginning of the season, and those two just having by our side on the field, it's so much calmer and more comfortable to play with than you have yeah. Michael I, I, on the field. I see Bradley as like literally the perfect captain, yeah. especially like with these Italians coming in. He, and he speaks Italian because yeah. he's he played for Roma. Yeah. He's yeah. been all over the place, and like he's he kind of brings Kevo too. Yeah, yeah, he's he's he brings kind of the two together, like the English speaking side, the Italian speaking side, kind yeah. of yeah. for sure. He speaks. He's a, he's he helps he's actually <laughs> with the translating for all yeah. those guys. So oh, you would think so on right? the field when they have questions or they have to ask something, Lorenzo and Fede, Bradley be the first to translate and help them out. So that's what you need, man. No, him. He's a he's a true a leader, a true captain. What about his father? Is the gaffer? He's good. How's it? He's good. Amazing with young players. Yeah. Wow! Well, hey, he, right he gave you the. <laughs> he gave you a right chance. So. I know yeah. he's yeah. gave yeah. my chance. He gave right you your debut. No, you're not gonna forget that. Didn't gave me my chance. Played me. Played me, 20, 23 games in a row. Yeah. Didn't if I made mistakes. If I had a bad game, he'll tell you. Tell me, but play me again. Trusted yeah. me. He's good in the locker room. Yeah. Very very. Room. He's a very very talkative coach. Yeah. Let you express yourself. Let you express yourself. If you're playing as a winger, a wide player, me playing as attacking fullback. It's amazing. You get, if you get any attacking field, go take players on. Don't be afraid. That's amazing. That's why. That's I what like you want as a coach, right? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Someone that has confidence in you just brings up your own confidence. Yeah. So, exactly. Because there's different types of coaches. There's coaches also like you know that want you to play the system role. Mm-hmm. You can't do this. You have to do this. Do this. But for young players, that's not what you really want. Yeah. You know. You just want to express yourself. You got to express yeah. yourself to find what's best suited for you. You yeah. know. So it's good to see that. Mm-hmm. Amazing. That's awesome. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but have you been to Canada, any Canada youth camps? Yeah, I was a part of the under-17 national team when we went to the World Cup qualifying in Panama. Jonathan David was on my team at that time. Um, Alfonso Davies was, he was supposed to be a part of that team, but I don't think he had his Canadian passport right away to come and play with us. Yeah. Wow. Um, but yeah, a lot of guys, even like Yates was on that team with me. Noble was on the team. A lot of ballers. Yeah. A lot of guys from TFC were a part of that. And then Paul Stelteri was the head coach. Now he's the assistant coach TFC. Damn. So he was the head coach. And then, yeah, we didn't end up qualifying, but that was my most recent one with the national team. How was that? Yeah, what was that experience was that like? getting like a call? Was it a call or was it like Yeah, a it was like a, I wasn't a part of the, the, the pre-camps that were leading up to it. I got called up to one camp before the, mm-hmm. the actual tournament, and I guess they did well enough to for him to call me and call me back for the World Cup qualifying. And then, like, once they start to pick the squad, like we were all we were all playing for, no, we were all part of the academy. There was like maybe Noble and Julian were the only guys that are signed to TFC two. Okay. And um, Jonathan David was playing uh, playing for Ottawa, and he was like star man. Like yeah, he was a star of that team. He was already unbelievable. Yeah, that, that striker. Bangers, eh? Yeah. So, and then you just get I guess a message. I got a message from the coach Paul, just letting me know that I'll be a part of the camp. And then we went there to Panama, and Panama was like hot. Oh my god! Like <laughs> it was, we, were, we were training one day. Humid too. We were training like one day. Oh, it was, it was it's bad. Heavy. It's heavy. We were training one day at the stadium. And I remember we were doing runs for fitness. Oh my god! I, I had to tell the I had to tell the coach like I'm done. I'm like, gonna puke. I'm, I'm done. Like I'm gonna throw up. Like I'm gonna pass out. So I had to be rushed in the change room to get fresh air. Have you ever passed out during a training or anything like that? Before? Yeah, I had a big. I had a big. My only I want to say injury. My my only big injury I had was a. I passed out. Um, my first year with the second team, TFC two, I had a heart problem. They found. Gosh, I passed out like most scariest thing I've ever experienced. Like Did you wake up on the floor. I went like it was. When I went to training one day on a Sunday, normal training. It was cloudy and a little bit of rain, and I, I'm a like I'm I'm a fit You're guy. A fit guys. Like I'm f- like top fitness. Like I can run all day, and I went to to this like training and I was doing runs like normal runs that I would always do, and I felt legs getting heavy. I felt my eyes started to shudder. Shoot. I felt like I was trying to run and I couldn't move my legs and I was like told the physicist like come like please I need help and then calm me down I sat down for a bit to calm my heart tried to go back and train again couldn't do it and then right away I walked out and I just passed out completely just sh- like completely Jeez. and then you woke up on the floor they no they they call the ambulance call nine one one the ambulance rushed to TFC and I was just lying back every time I tried to stand up I would co- collapse right away. Oh, and then shit. they rushed me to the hospital, and as I got into the like the hospital truck, um, I think I panicked too much. And yeah, I of completely course. like my heart was going like they told me like two hundred beats per second. Like, of course, man. They were about to rush me like air patrol. Like they thought wow. I was like 
Like it was, it was bad. It was out of nowhere. My parents were on vacation at that time. Oh, so nobody was like, I couldn't no call knew. anybody yeah, to know. like wow. come to the hospital and help me. Like, so I got to the hospital and I, and everything calmed down and I had to do cardiolog like cardiologist tests, tests and everything. And, stuff, and they yeah. found out that I was born with a uh, arrhythmia. It's an irregular, yeah. irregular heartbeat and 18 years playing, never done nothing. one, nothing, nothing happened. And they found out that day and it kind of just woke me up and now TFC takes that serious with the ECG tests. Yeah, people of course, yeah. that have heart problems, and then I did surgery on that. That was the only time I've had a serious injury. I did surgery. You were out for a while with that, right? Yeah, I was out for two, three months. I had to wait to do surgery. Yeah, and they did open, not open heart surgery. I was like awake. But you go yeah. in and um, they burn the bad tissues around my heart okay. so that it doesn't happen again. And I did that, and then right away, two weeks later, I went back and started to play again. Just, wow! Geez, and you were awake for that. I was awake. I was, like I was wow. literally like this in the Looking bed. At the I was, light. Look at the TV, and I was seeing everything that was going on. Oh, couldn't shit. feel it. Couldn't feel a thing. They yeah. were showing you. Everything? I can see everything. Oh, I wouldn't oh. want to see it. <laughs> that that's scary. It was, it was weird. Put a put a <laughs> TFC game or something on. I don't want to watch <laughs> that, it. That they whole, put, they couldn't put me to sleep it. though. That's why I was like, "Can I go oh. to sleep?" Oh no! They so said you can't. Heart, they so you need my heart to beat regularly. You're sleeping. Your heart slows down a bit. Yeah, I remember we, me, and my brother were in Ecuador once, and we passed out. That was crazy. I tell you, that's why. Knowing people that pass out, like, you wake up, you're like, fuck. Yeah. You're on the floor. I felt like puking. I was like, horrible. Exactly. I had to throw up for me to go yeah, back to normal. It was horrible. To trigger, like, a nerve, they said. Exactly. And, oh gosh, yeah, that was the scariest thing. Imagine. Yeah, that's, thing it's good they caught had. it, though. Yeah. I remember when it. I found out that, like, you had that, I was like, like, Luca? Like, that's never, like, never anything yeah. wrong with him. Like, growing up, nothing. They, like, they literally that, nothing. They, the, the coaching staff thought that maybe I had too much drink, too much to drink <laughs> yeah. on the Saturday night. Like, maybe he's, he's, he's went out, he's had too much to drink. And I'm like, I'm like I don't no, drink. I'm like, I'm having a serious problem, man. <laughs> yeah, like literally, yeah, yeah. No, that's like one of the scariest things you can go through. Oh, it was scary. That's bad. Like, it was scary. Yeah, as long as they figured it out, no, yeah, they figured it out, fixed it. Hopefully, now they, now they take now. it all serious. With yeah, of course. Now I mean. when we do the medical tests and when we come in for preseason, they do everything with the heart to make sure everything's okay. So how often do you do that? Um, Only once every medical is will be just right before the season starts, okay. right okay. before preseason. I heard those are really fun. No. <laughs> Long the whole Long, day, right? it's the whole day. Bunch of tests. Just make like, you run. Um, they put yeah, no. Nah. Oh, right? tests. No, each line the red. Do your heart stuff. Blood work. Gosh. A lot of stuff you do. It's it boring. <laughs> Part of the <laughs> grind, I guess. <laughs> you gotta do it, right? Yeah. So at least it's the first day when we come back from pre come back from vacation. So you see everybody. So it goes by That's better. That's true. That's yeah, true. Yeah. Just talk to everybody while it happens. Yeah, I got a question. Um, who's the best player you've ever played against? I was gonna ask that. Yeah. Best player I've ever played against. Um, like player that's maybe giving me the most trouble. I was saying, yeah, like, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the most to the defend most, against the yeah. most trouble that I've had against defending with someone was against Atlanta, uh, Arahu, the guy that came from Lille. Yeah. The oh winger, yes. The DP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Only yeah. guy that actually got the ball and just dribbled at me all game, just pace. <laughs> Made you look like a fool. just just dribble, <laughs> boom, slide, boom, slide. He's gone. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. We won that game two one. And I came off like the 65th, 70 minute. I was like, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was trouble. <laughs> this guy was making you look like an idiot. This guy was unbelievable. So every time now I watch him, it's amazing. But He's, you learn from that, right? Yeah, you learn. Like now you watch him, you see, okay, now maybe I can find ways to stop mm -hmm. him. And next time you face him. Yeah. Right? Because he's young, fast. Yeah. He's a direct winger. A lot of the other wingers that you come up against are just more experienced players. I like to just cut in, combine. Yeah. It's easy to, easier to defend. And then there's, like, guys that just want to get at you and run. That's what you see from most European players. Yeah. You know, like DP, you're saying he is. Yeah. They're not scared to attack. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of MLS players that, you know, are st stayed in the MLS for so long. They play a system where it's, like, you go up, you pass back. You go up, you pass mm -hmm. back. These European guys aren't scared to go. No, I agree. And show off, right? It's so. Like Bernadeschi, every time he gets the ball, yeah. he just tries to go. Yeah. He loses the ball here and there, but yeah. <laughs> at least He's he trying. tries. He's trying. He's trying to create Guys something. don't try. Yeah, guys turn yeah. back and they pass it back. So it's good to see something different, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, what are your goals as a footballer? My goals is obviously to, to p obviously play as long as I can for TFC and play consistently uh, to be a part of this team, especially the way our team's going now. Yeah. Hopefully that we can win as many MLS Cups and trophies, Canadian Championship trophies. So with the team we have, we definitely could just to be a part of it. It'd be amazing. Um, if I could play here forever, I'd play here for like, I love TFC, like, do anything for TFC, like mm -hmm. the boyhood club. Like yeah, I exactly. said, when I was 12 years old. Yeah, like, you've been with them for a long time. I used to be a ball time. boy when during the World like during um, the MLS Cups when TFC were in it wow. at home. 
both games they were home. I was a ball boy. When Jovinko was here. Yeah, and I even said it in my like post game post game press conference after my MLS debut. Like they asked me, I was like, I was like, yeah, I used to be an MLS ball boy. Like I would watch these people, like <laughs> these players, every day. Yeah. And then now I go to step on the field and play at BMO Field. Like surreal. Yeah. I, if if I can play here for as long as I can, I would definitely play here and obviously to try and get to the men's national team. Hopefully for. 2026 World yeah, Cup. Yeah. It's That'd here. Be yeah, yeah. It'll, be, it'll be here. I got four years to get, hopefully get invited yeah. to some camps. And yeah. Yeah. Got time. never know. Yeah. yeah, that'd be sick. No uh, no European thought for you? I mean, your brother's been yeah. to Europe before. Definitely, definitely. And he tell you anything about Europe? He likes it, don't know, over there? Uh, yeah, he loves it. He would go back right away yeah. now. He would go back to England. Like, obviously, he gets over the, the period where you're homesick and you miss yeah, your family when you're young. Mm-hmm. But now that he's old there. You move there in a like in a second. Like he just yeah. feels more comfortable at home yeah. in in England. Like here he, he's home, but like he just doesn't feel doesn't like feel he's, the same. Yeah, like there the soccer, like he's like the football is just like amazing. He's been there for so long. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. like even when he went on loan, he went on loan um, last year to Barnet, and they're in the conference, so just under League Two, mm-hmm. fifth division England. And he was like, once they came calling to bring him in on loan, right away practice bag. He didn't and he care was gone. that I was a lower division. Didn't care. Just, just wanted to play in England. And just to feel it. The quality's different, man. He just like he loves it there. Like we we had he met a lot of family and friends there. Um, so he was able to stay there for a whole year with them and the club was right beside the the house. Oh wow. So he he loves it in England. Anywhere in Europe he would go back yeah. and play. We were going over it before we started the pod. Like MLS is at like it's growing at a crazy rate right yeah, now. It really is. I mean obviously you know you're playing with these guys, you know how good they are. Mm-hmm. A lot of these guys are good enough to play in Europe for sure. I mean the players that are coming and getting signed, I mean we were talking about before yeah. you have like you have back then it was just all old guys coming in when you know they're about to retire but now you have players yeah. like Ricky Puig who came from Barcelona yeah, that's he was like supposed to be 23 like, years old 23 years old he was supposed to be generational you know the next up and coming midfielder unfortunately you know Pedri came on <laughs> and dis- Gavi destroyed <laughs> <laughs> everything shout out to them <laughs> but, uh, 28 years old or whatever yeah, 27 yeah. but no like now you see these players coming in at, at such a young age because they know that they can come here and ball mm-hmm. out there's even a, an Ecuadorian who plays in Miami. He's Campana. He's he's a uh, he came here because he knows he can get a chance to yeah. express himself um, here, yeah. and he wants to come here because he knows if he plays here, he can go and make yeah. that World Cup team. So, and teams all over Europe are looking at MLS. Yeah. Like you see so yeah, many yeah. players, young players that go to Europe. Like Busio last year went to Venezia. Mm. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, another guy from FC Dallas went to Serie Venezia. Um, you can see now all the transfer rumors like. Seen the, um, I think somebody was somebody in Holland was coming in for Mihalovic on Montreal. Oh, true. That's right. Um, big team in Holland. I think PSV. I'm not I'm sure which team it was, but even the American goalie that went to Arsenal. Yeah, that was uh, just last year. Th- this year, and so. then the guy that went to Chelsea, Slonina in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So all these big clubs are looking. I mean, like teams are starting to realize that it's such a such a big market here yeah. in the MLS. Un- untapped the market. Mm-hmm. I think Al- Alfonso Davies kind of exploded that, exploded yeah. the scene. Oh, yeah. 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 seen how much 100%. talent that player has, and he's like, you never know what you can find in MLS like, now. Yeah. Bro, like, Bayern got him for a good cheap price, man. Yeah. Like, you're looking in Europe. You get a, you get it was like 10 mil. Yeah, right? like 10. Yeah. yeah, for generational he talent. Plays every game. Starters. Yeah. Like, a, like, one of the main Probably players. One yeah. of the best left backs in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With, he got him for play- cheap. He's playing with guys like Lewandowski, Mane. Yeah. Like that's just obviously when you go there, it's like it's easy to play there because you feel like you're playing at the top level. You're playing with yeah. the best players in the world, so it just yeah. makes your job easier. Yeah. It's easier to get better as well. Yeah, so it just it was perfect for him. Yeah, no, it's definitely. And they changed him from a left wing to left back, so yeah, yeah. yeah. helped him like massive big time. Yeah, amazing. So yeah. athletic. I remember fast. when that was going down. <laughs> I was like, why are they moving him to left back? He's so talented, but yeah. then. He's out, basically yeah. a left winger. <laughs> basically, he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's all the way up the field. Man, he can be up, and then you have guys defending him behind. Oh, bro, look, like, look at him, bro. You can run all game. It doesn't matter. Okay. Run up and down the field. Bayern has the ball like 90% of the game anyway, yeah. so you can just stay high. Uh, what does what Mueller call him again? The uh, Roadrunner. Yeah. Road, Roadrunner. He's there. <laughs> me, 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 me. Canadian Roadrunner. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, you can no. see, man. Like, there's so much opportunity here in, in Europe. In Can- uh, sorry, in the States, Canada. Yeah. That, like, European teams are starting to figure it out, man. It's harder to get players from Europe because they're more expensive, and mm-hmm. then, you know those teams don't want to let them go. Yeah. MLS guys, like man, it's a good opportunity for the club and for the player, yeah. right? You get exposed to that. The team gets exposed to that, and you you know at the end of the day, it's all a profit. But like everyone's winning at that situation. Yeah, so yeah. that's why I mean, twenty plus games through this season, which that's huge for you. Huge, because I mean, there's a lot of in your first season. 
Yeah, the first yeah there's a lot to go off of. Any, like games. I said, you you played well, know, so I mean, you never know. Yeah, you never know. You never know. Why? Any opportunity? I mean, you already know that. Yeah, and the clubs, <laughs> any on, the any clubs on the rise. You're any on the rise. Exactly. A lot of eyes on TFC right now, that's for sure. Only yeah. up from here. Sure. And then when 2026 comes around, I, I think soccer will be the number one sport. In the country, Damn. oh yeah! After yeah, 2026, yeah, yeah. the like shock waves that makes, yeah, all yeah, the young guys on our yeah. team Canada now will be in their prime. Like yeah. Alfonso, Jonathan, David, will be 20, you too. Yeah, You'll we'll be, be in your prime. 26 years old. Yeah, you're yeah, right in your prime. Making, Not even. You're, you're still young at 26. <laughs> you're making yeah, me yeah. sound. I'm 26. You're making me sound old. <laughs> I know. You're no. You're literally that's <laughs> still young. Still considered 26. Still young. Yeah, 26. Still young. That she's only 28. Like young. Got like a good seven years to play. And now yeah. in football, you can play until you're 37, yeah. 30, yeah. 40. Like Look you at Crescito, 35. Yeah. Looks like a star out there. <laughs> Solid, man. I, it's that was the biggest surprise to me, Crescito, man. He's good. He's so good. No, but Solid. your generation is paving the way. The 2000s, I think it's yeah, paving lot, the way right now. A lot of talent. Alex, you messed up, bro. What happened to you? Man, you know what? <laughs> you can ask him, man. The players that we were playing against, these guys were like... Nasty. Like... I'm telling you, maybe I would have been a good player in uh, 2001, sure, sure. 1998, maybe. You, you weren't focused enough, man. <laughs> yeah, okay. We're going to call the other this podcast. Yeah. And, and the, we, we, talk, we talk about Mbappe being a generational brat. That's this guy here. Alex, brat. What a brat. Was he bratty on the pitch, though? Yeah. yeah. Look at the line. He was, right? Even in men's league, this guy talks to the he ref. He's acting super so. He's, he's, he's super so. Talks to the ref, talks to his own players, gets everyone mad. Oh, so shit. you were bench. Me? Yeah. Depends. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like, like as we got older, mm -hmm. our team got like, it was too competitive. It was like we had we had mm -hmm. a sick team. Yeah. No. While we're on that, tell us about this this uh, <laughs> this Ontario Cup final. Woodbridge versus Vaughn. There's oh, an wow. asterisk behind it. Why? Didn't it go to penalties? No, we won one nil. <laughs> oh kick. yes, Wake yes, yes, yes! Right over Nick Diaco. Yeah. Yes, I remember that. Okay, but why is there an asterisk? <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard there might be an asterisk. Okay, it was mostly played outdoor. You know, we were in our. <laughs> They got moved indoor. We weren't happy about that. I think you guys were like down for it. Yeah, we were down. And we we were like not down at all. We're like, let's play. It's let's rainy. Play game, it doesn't right matter. Now. Let's go outside. And then, I mean, there was really no asterisk. Uh, we lost. Were there, were there other Ontario Cups that were indoors? Like the final? There was, an, there was indoor Ontario Cups. But like but the, just the final. I think, were you on my team when we won on indoor? No, I only won once. Won Woodbridge. Wow. I know we won, I think, I think Vaughn, I think we won two indoor Ontario Cups and one outdoor. Yeah, don't ask me. I think. I don't even actually. It's been a while ago. But at the time, what was that rivalry like? Because, like, a lot of people don't know, like, Vaughn versus Oh, no, Woodbridge, no. Woodbridge, like, Woodbridge and Vaughn, that was a big rivalry. Like, fights every game, 100%. Not fights. Like, we were you, young. You get, but like, no, there were a couple of fights. I remember fights. Yeah, yeah. More Mac like parent Mouse. fights. Parent fights. <laughs> it was amazing. Vaughn yeah, it was good. It was good. I remember the parents get into it. It was a big derby. It was usually the moms. The moms were... I remember my mom got <laughs> yeah, into our it mom. a time. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's usually the moms. Yeah, no, it was big derby. Italian Woodbridge versus Vaughn, our age, was big derby. Because everyone knew each other. Like, a, a lot of players going from Vaughn to Woodbridge and Woodbridge to Vaughn. Yeah. It happened a lot. Was that the biggest derby in a YSL? Uh, yeah. yeah. For yeah. your age group, yeah. I, yeah. Think, I think until, like, Mordell came, and then Mordell more became... Like, Vaughn and Mordell started to, like, hate each other. I don't know why. It was weird. But, yeah, Woodbridge and... Woodbridge, like I said, Woodbridge, Mordell, Brampton, the two Bramptons, and Vaughn. Those are, like, the five teams. Like, uh, even Markham was pretty good. Yeah. Markham, Mordell... Brampton always were good. It was just Vaughn and Woodbridge for me. Yeah. Best games. Balls. Yeah, those were fun. Nights. Yeah, those were good. You always <laughs> look forward to that in the... In those the fun. Because you knew everyone. Like, it's just like, no, yeah. you're like, you're... We never liked each other. No one liked each other. Couple reds it, it was a, It was serious. No, it was a serious, like, Couple it was a serious foot, beef. Two foot challenges. Yeah. yeah. You, <laughs> you was <laughs> going? It was, a, it was a serious beef. I'm not joking. It was serious. Like, it was Were actually, you scrapping? Yeah. I don't this guy scrap. Of course. I don't do that. I don't do that. <laughs> yeah, on camera you don't do I'm that. More of a, I'm more of a ref chirper. He's, a he's oh, always okay. talking to the ref. Yeah. Still Sean doesn't. Morgan, if you're watching this, it's all your fault. <laughs> was was he repping those games? I think so. Yeah, back in that day, yeah, he was. He was actually ref. Solid. Uh, oh my gosh. But yeah, yeah, man, that's the path. I mean, for a lot of the people that might be listening or watching, Vaughn or Woodbridge to TFC to first team, that's a that's a possible path. And right, you're an example of that. Um, there's so many different paths, and um, you have a very interesting journey. And glad you were able to share it with us today. Yeah, no thank problem. you very much. Yeah. It was a pleasure hearing all your stories, hearing a couple of a little bit of the backstage as yeah. well. So, no, it's amazing. Canada's on the rise, man. Yeah, right. It is. The trassel's on the rise. <laughs> <laughs> what? Of this Canada team? Yeah.
and win or what? Oh, yeah. What do you think about World Cup Canada this year? We actually talked about this a couple of times in the changing room because we have so many now Canadian guys. The Mark yeah, Anthony, yeah, Oso, right. Richie, Daniel Henry. Osorio. And they're all getting excited for Osorio it. Osorio too, right? Yeah. yeah. A so lot of them, like, you're, I saw a couple of interviews. They're saying, like, all they think about is the World you're Cup. Just, they're just, just trying to be prepared about, and stay healthy for that. Right. For that World Cup. Like, first World Cup for all of those players. Yeah. Yeah. And then it'll be the last one probably for Atiba Hutchison because he's almost 40 years yeah. old. Yeah. No. Yeah. So, like, they're even saying, like, they got... Crazy group, Belgium, Croatia, and Morocco. Yeah. But they think that they can, I believe too, they can get yeah. through. As yeah, a second yeah. place, maybe a top third team. If you can if you can get a point against... Uh, One or two. If you get a point against uh, Croatia and then a win against Morocco, it's four points. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You said it pretty good. And then you never know, Belgium, you can battle it out. Belgium's the first game, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So, so you never know. You never yeah. know yeah. Belgium will it be. is better to bang that out first. Of course. Everybody they're not ready for it. Yeah. the first game. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I think Mentality's teams, high. teams are not ready for what Canada's going to yeah. come out with. They're going to come out guns blazing. Yeah. Got a good squad. Yeah, that squad, so that, front, that, that front four, front five. Yeah, like I think on the counter attack, Canada's Alfonso, scary. Tejon. Yeah, that's good. Joe Calais, David. Jonathan David. Weather's like, going to mess a lot of people up, though. Like, I assume maybe maybe they'll sit back, maybe they won't. But if they could cash teams on the counter, yeah. I don't I don't I don't think we're gonna sit back. I don't oh. think so. We'll see. And a lot of teams are gonna do it. I think that's our so. style. Davies uh, and Davies we'll go and for Larea, I don't know what it is. Larea for Canada, he's just like a different guy. Yeah. He's a he's dog. He's been performing pretty yeah. well for yeah, yeah. No, he's nasty yeah. for he's TFC so good too, for TFC. Like yeah. for yeah. Canada, he's so like, good. This guy should be playing England, which he was. But yeah. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good, man. It's gonna be amazing. I love I can't wait. Can't wait. You're going to be watching it, too, so it's good to learn yeah. from that, too, man, right? So. Right, right. So it'll be, we'll be in off-season, so perfect time. Sit yeah. back and watch the World yeah. Cup. Maybe we'll do some uh, live streams. Maybe you'll that, join us. Yeah. yeah, I'll join. No problem. Amazing. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. perfect. But, yeah. It's going to be exciting. Who do you think is going to win the World Cup? We'll end off with that. Win the World Cup. Without saying Canada. <laughs> Don't be biased. No, no, no. <laughs> um, no, Italy, so. I, I don't know. I don't want to I don't want to say... I do want to I do want to say England, but I don't know if it's gonna happen. Really, I can't, do. Man. I they want don't have to, that but chemistry, man. I just want to see them go far because yeah. I just love watching those a lot players of young players, players. young yeah, players, yeah. man. Yeah. Fun team, um, but I could see realistically. I don't think France. Yeah, I think, I think maybe uh, maybe a Brazil or. Oh, what about don't a, say that, please. What I about could a, see a Brazil come through. Their favorites. What do you mean? Don't say that. <laughs> Spain's a good team. Spain's a good yeah, team. Spain's good. Spain always goes far. Yeah. Usually, even Portugal will be fun to watch. I hope Portugal oh, and are, Argentina are. finals. That'd be Argentina, yeah, yeah. Oh Portugal, God. Argentina finals. Last, yeah. last World Cup for Messi. That's not I hope no. not. That's not happening. <laughs> we'll see. I hope not. But yeah, thanks again. For no, I got one more question. <laughs> actually, I got one, more. Uh, one more question. <laughs> one more question because uh, we, we asked this to a couple of guys to ever oh, rolls yeah, through. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, who, 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 who's your goat, Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. No he's question. Like lefty man. He's, he's going to choose the left. Uh, lefty fan. That's his go with the left. That's Why, it. You like Ronaldo more? No, no, I'm a lefty too. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Messi for Messi, sure. Messi, yeah. I can I answer Messi. that for you. <laughs> <laughs> I knew his answer. Think, uh, Born natural <laughs> talent. Who do you model your game by after? Yeah, who do you model your game after? Or who? Actually, yeah, like who are you players? watching like growing up? Like that, like you kind of tried to. Growing up, well, growing yeah. up, I used to be a midfielder and like I used to be an eight right winger. So I always watched, obviously Messi, but like. I used to watch Dybala a lot. Damn, yeah. don't, don't boost this yeah. guy. Don't gas him. I love Dybala. <laughs> that's fine. And then now as I transition as to more as like an attacking fullback or winger, I love Theo Hernandez on Milan. Nasty player. I love watching <laughs> him. Look at the color of Spinozola. Yeah. Spinozola is one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah Spinozola is great. I love Spinozola. I watched him in Italy. It was amazing. Davies, so, so you model your game around those Davies. players? Yeah, I try to. Like those are players that I, I attacking, just, attacking minded, attacking players. minded. Yeah. I love, love the way they play. Yeah, that's the style these days. Yeah, yeah. That, that's back. how football yeah. in general has been changing. Where the yeah, wing backs yeah. are very attacking. Yeah. Did you have a favorite team growing up? Um, no. See, this is the thing. Like everybody says, you don't have a favorite team. You don't support a team. Yeah. Like I, su- I don't support. I, I don't have one major team, but I there's certain teams I just like to watch and I follow a lot. Like in what's England, your prem team? My prem team I support is Man U. But like I'm not like diehard Man U fan. No. You just, but I love to watch Man U. Yeah. yeah, just based on culture, history. Yeah, I just like that's watching true. them. I love watching Spurs. Spurs, eh? That's Spurs. opposite of culture and history. Though. <laughs> 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 I just love watching Spurs because Harry Kane and Son. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's and then I like I like the coach now, Conte. Yeah, yeah. So we're all football fans too. I don't, like we have our teams, but we all love watching. Yeah, we'll, I'll, I'll watch, watch every game. Every yeah. Game. I love watching. I just love, we all love footy. That's what it is. You love watching. And Only leagues that I don't watch, though, are Bundesliga and the French League. Yeah. That's okay. I can't watch. That's fine. But I think, I think I remember one time we were at a tournament. It was the Kobe tournament Woodbridge. 
And I remember there was like a break. So like there's breaks between the games. Mm-hmm. And it was the UCL final. And my dad left. He wasn't there. He was coming back. And I remember Luca was like, no, no, we need to go watch this. We need to go. We need to go. <laughs> we went to his nonna's house. <laughs> we're watching the UCL finals in his nonna's living room. No. Between a game. And like we we're almost like. She was probably cooking up the pasta. And yeah, everything. she did. She did. I remember she gave us a. Like, eat, eat. My dad was. <laughs> you know, I remember we were drinking like ginger ale. And his nonna's like, don't say anything. Ginger <laughs> 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 Right before game. a game, don't say oh, anything. Okay, okay. Ginger ale. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember what final that was? Uh, who was it against? I, I want to say it was like, was it Chelsea Bayern? No, it wasn't Chelsea Bayern. No, it was Barca. I remember it was Barca. Barca playing. Juve. Barca Man U. No, no, it was not. Sorry, maybe that, that far back. Ago. It was probably yeah, twenty. Barca Man U. Maybe oh wait, no, oh, wait. Barca Man U. Twenty eleven. No, no, maybe twenty eleven. That yeah. sounds right. Twenty eleven, yeah. probably around there. Probably around there, but yeah. Man. This year, my Serie A team is Roma, though. Everyone's saying that. Going for Roma this year. Oh, looking good. I love Zaniolo. My favorite He's out for player. three weeks, but it's okay. My Juve is not know. looking good. They yeah. drew today. It's okay. We don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, bro. Um, of course, best of luck to you. We appreciate you coming by. This is a dope chat. Um, learned a lot about your path, your career, and we wish you the best. Wish TOC the best, and we're going to see you in 2026. Yes. I believe it. Thank you. Thank 100%. you guys for having me. I believe it. No, it, it was definitely a pleasure watching, uh, hearing your story, watching you play, and you know, getting a behind the scenes of it. You know, yeah. so it, Finding out who you are as a character and as a person. And uh, thanks for uh, letting us, you know, figure that out. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Let's see. There's, there's more to it than just you see me on the yeah, field. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. This That's guy's it. trash. I hate <laughs> <laughs> Oh, those are the best. You get the Twitter. The Twitter yeah. ones, they just rinse you after a game. <laughs> do you do you go on Twitter after the games and um, watch it? Or are you just like, you know. Oh, well, uh, now, no. I've been trying not to look at it. Yeah. But in the beginning, I used to just go on and just see what people say. I'm curious. Of course. This is my first time yeah, experiencing it. Yeah, of course. Exactly. And then, like, after you have, have a great game, oh, you're the best. And Amazing. then you have a bad game. Then yeah. I have a bad game. Oh, this guy sucks. Let's go have a play him Why again. Why is he playing? Yeah. <laughs> it's always the same guy. Yeah, that like, talking about me. <laughs> like, like, right after the game, like, when you guys go to the locker room, are you guys going to your phones right away? Like, checking? Like, maybe, fr- maybe some people Who's are. Who's their first one on their phone? Insignia. No, <laughs> no, I don't know, actually. I don't, I don't. People go to their phones, but. You wait. You wait until the coach comes in and talks. Yeah. Yeah, After sure. that, and then you it's can whatever. go and do whatever you want. Game. You change. You shower. People go on their phone, but they're just going on their phone just to like if we're away and you text your yeah. family, yeah. You text your friends, girlfriend. That's true. Because if it was me, I'd be so eager to check like Instagram comments after the game. Yeah. Are you resp- are you replying to them? Like. It, it'd just be in my head because like what are people saying about me but like <laughs> it's, it's different mentality well, i guess after, now i try not to because yeah. that's good though yeah I've you kind of channel like, it out i don't really care what people are gonna cares. say you to focus me. on yourself focus on the grind it's just somebody hiding behind the screen trying to exactly. talk about me yeah that's exactly. it the only people that pe- like only opinions that matter to me are Your obviously coaches. the coach yeah. and my family and exactly. ours and yours. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one talk guy is gonna say this guy sucks <laughs> <laughs> that's it but yeah um Make sure you guys smash the like button. Subscribe to the podcast. Be sure to check out Luca on the pitch everywhere. Yes. We'll drop this out right here. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Edit that in. I don't know how to do that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Give him a follow, of course, on the gram. And uh, we the culture. We the culture, boys. See you. Later, later. This guy was the biggest brat as a kid. (laughs) I was. Yes, you were. Oh, man. Even now, you're a brat. And you play men's league.